G'day, Andrew Murray here from The Apartment Specialist. Welcome to our channel. Today we're talking about long-term maintenance plans. Like, what are they and why are they important? Okay, so today we've got Harry from the team. Hey guys, how's it going? Cool, now Harry, when you go to look for an apartment and you want to purchase it, say for yourself, explain what a long-term maintenance plan means to you. Um, I guess I kind of look at a long-term maintenance plan almost like servicing a car. So if you look after a car properly, it'll, it'll look after you as well. Um, long-term maintenance plan is kind of that looking after the building so it looks after you in the long term too. That's actually a really good, um, I'm sorry, I'm just not quite surprised, that's actually a really good, um, I suppose, metaphor for a long-term maintenance plan because when you, exactly that, if you buy a car that hasn't been serviced, you know it's more likely to give you issues. Yeah. So Harry, for people out there, what does a long-term maintenance plan actually look like? Um, so typically a long-term maintenance plan, um, it has to be done for 10 years. Yeah. Um, most people just do it for 15 years. Uh, and it's kind of just a schedule of what maintenance and work is going to be done on the building over these next 10 to 15 years. Okay, so it's sort of like saying, well, in 2024, that's when we're going to do the painting. Yep. 2026, we may do redo the lift, things like that. Yep. Okay, so it's kind of like a diary. Yep. So, yeah, when you're looking at, I want you all to think of a long-term maintenance plan as if you had a house. Now, we all know a house is long-term, it has to be painted. You have, you have the gutters cleaning, you've got to be doing the gardening. If you've got a pool, it's got to be cleaned. Well, that's exactly the same for a building. Yep. And we've all been down the street and looked at a, at a, you know, at a house that hasn't been looked after. You know, every, every street has one. Yep. Thing. Okay, so Harry, how would you explain, uh, you've got some tips about a long-term maintenance plan. Well, if someone's you know, sitting there going, well, so, that's a long-term maintenance plan, what do I do when I'm buying? Um, I guess when I'm looking at a long-term maintenance plan, I make sure that, yeah, first of all, there's some things that are, are happening over the next few years that are going to actually add value to the building. Um, so a couple of things that I like to look at is upgrading the common areas is yeah. a huge one that yeah. um, most buildings need, and you'll see that something like that will typically add value to a building. Um, but also other stuff, again, like houses, mm. every so often they need a paint, um, every mm. so often they need a wash as well. These are a couple of things that I look at um, when looking at the long-term maintenance plan to make sure the body corporate are taking care of yeah. it. That's a very good tip. If you can look for where in a long-term maintenance plan where something that's going to add value, so it's generally a ticket item, it may be happening in two or three years, especially even, even painting, I reckon, raises the value. Yep. You think about if you have a house, if you paint it, it looks so much better. Well, that's the same for a building. Yep. Uh, so that's actually a really good tip. If you buy before it's done, you're going to be making money and everybody's going to be paying for it. Yep. So now, what about how, how the things cost? How is that all sorted out? So this is, yeah, again, where there are some pitfalls in it. So even though you have a long-term maintenance plan um, and it is stipulated out each year what's going to happen, um, if there's no money to pay for it, then yeah. that's going to be a big issue too. So you do need to check the budget and make sure that the money that's going aside for the long-term maintenance plan um, is actually going to cover the costs. Okay, so that's where you obviously look in the budget and see that, that there's, there should be two lines that are either saying money towards long-term maintenance fund or contingency fund. Yep. And then you'll be matching that to those funds and seeing how much is there and seeing if that's in line with the budget. Yep. Okay, so that's a big one because legally, as you said, you have to have a long-term maintenance fund, but in the Unit Titles Act, you don't legally have to follow it, which is a bit ridiculous for you. It's like saying, yeah, I'm going to get a service next year, but you don't. Harry, thanks for coming in, buddy. Really like the point about checking the plan with the budget. So... Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening, guys. If you've got any questions, please put them in the box below and me or Harry will answer them for you. And please follow us on, obviously, YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. Cheers.